Here I'll show you how to do multiple linear regression in Microsoft Excel, and I'll use an example that shows how the results can change when we add new variables to the model. So the first thing to remember is that a linear model is one where we can try to estimate the value of a y variable using knowledge of at least one other variable. In simple linear regression, we use only one other variable to try to estimate y. In this case, y will be the gas mileage of cars. In multiple linear regression, we use multiple other variables in an attempt to measure the gas mileage of cars or any other y variable you may be trying to estimate. So first things first, I'll show you how easy it is to do multiple linear regression when we have Microsoft Excel. We go into data, data analysis. We go down to the regression option and we input our X and Y ranges just as we do with simple linear regression. The Y range is very similar because we only have one column. The X range, however, now involves three columns. The only thing we need to make sure is that all three columns are next to each other. That way we can select them all in one box. We selected our column titles, so we'll click the labels option. We'll have our output go right next door. Let's take a look at that output. The output is very similar to a simple linear regression output from Excel. We have an R square value here, which tells us the percent of variance in Y, now explained by the variance in all of the X variables. So it's not just the variance in Y explained by the variance in X, it's the variance in Y that can be explained by the variance in all of the X variables. When we add more information, when we add more X variables to try to estimate Y, we should be able to do better. We still have a standard error. The standard error tells us the average error of prediction or estimation. So we're still off plus or minus about three miles per gallon with each one of these car estimations. And we also get the y-intercept as well as a number of slopes here. Notice that because we have three x variables, we're given three slopes. To come up with a prediction for y, we need to use all three of these slopes in our formula, so our formula is a little bit more complicated. Say we want to estimate the gas mileage for a car that has a length of 200 inches, a width of 68 inches, uh, a weight of, let's say, 3,000 pounds, and we always use the y-intercept, so I'll just keep the y-intercept up here. To make that prediction for mileage, I would say that that is equal to the length times the slope for length plus the width times the slope for width plus the weight times the slope for weight plus we always need to make sure we add our y-intercept whether it's simple linear regression or multiple linear regression. Now we see that such a car from this type of a data set would have an expected mileage of about 27 and a half miles per gallon. That's how we can use multiple linear regression and lots of information, like maybe three pieces of information about a car, to try to estimate a new car's gas mileage. I promised I would tell you what can happen to the linear regression when we add more variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back now, I'm gonna use a different sheet, I'm gonna copy my data into a different sheet here. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. I'm going to do a simple linear regression between gas mileage and length, just to get an idea of the relationship between those two. So I go data, data analysis, regression. My Y range is my gas mileage. This time my X range will only be my length. I'm going to put my output range right here. And let's take a look at this relationship. First off, we see the R squared value is lower. That's typical when we lose variables, when we're only using one variable instead of three to try to estimate why, we're losing information. By losing information, we shouldn't be able to explain as much of why as we could before, so that makes sense. Our standard error gets a little bit higher. Our error is greater. More importantly though, let's take a look at the coefficient here on length, the slope. Recall that this slope means, this negative slope, indicates that for increases in the length of a car, we can expect it to lose gas mileage. This makes sense because as cars get longer, and if we don't know anything else about why they got longer, we probably can expect them to get bigger 
longer cars tend to be bigger cars. Thus, when length increases, it indicates the car is a bigger car. And we know that bigger cars tend to get worse gas mileage. So this is why I think the relationship is negative here. Longer cars are bigger cars, bigger cars get lower gas mileage. That's what makes a negative relationship, when one variable goes up and the other variable goes down. So again, length has a negative relationship. I'm stressing that because look what happens when we go back to the regression when we have added variables. Length's coefficient is positive, which means that as a car gets longer, it also gets better gas mileage. It might seem like these two things are contradicting each other. One of them said that as the length goes up, the mileage goes down. One of them said as the length goes up, the mileage goes up. That seems like a contradiction, but it's not. And let me explain why. In a simple linear regression, there's no other variables here trying to explain gas mileage. It's kind of like length is an employee at a company, but he's the only employee and he's forced to do a lot of different things. Length isn't just talking about the length of the car, but it's an indication of the size of a car as well. In other words, it kind of has two jobs. It's explaining both the length and the size of the car all at once because we don't have a variable that describes the size of the car. In this way, length is really a size variable here, and it makes sense that bigger cars get worse gas mileage. When we come back over here, recall that we have the width and weight of a car both in the model. In other words, we have a lot of other variables to help us measure the size of the car. The weight here especially, but also the width, help to explain the size of the car, and thus the length is left to explain something else. If we think about cars, two cars will say, that have the same width and same weight, but one of them is longer, what we've really done is we've essentially stretched that car out. It has the same weight and it has the same width, but it's gonna be longer and probably shorter. That's the only way you can fit the same amount of weight into a wider space. Thus, length is almost helping us here to describe aerodynamics. In multiple linear regression, oftentimes variables represent more than just the literal translation of what they are. Length is not just length here, but when combined with width and weight, length is actually kind of an aerodynamic property. And as length increases, the height of the car almost has to decrease. Thus, greater lengths imply better aerodynamics, which would imply a better gas mileage. This isn't the only explanation for why we see a change in the influence of length. There could be other reasons having to do with cars that I don't understand because I'm not a cars person, but from a basic physics perspective, it makes sense why when we add width and weight to the model, when we add new variables to the multiple linear regression, the existing variable length goes from having a negative slope to having a positive slope. Multiple linear regression helps us to identify all of the complex relationships between the variables at play. And it's always important to remember that variables can take on new tasks or new roles depending on what other variables are in the model with them. There's no statistical test of any kind that can explain why different variables have the slopes they do. We have to use our brains for that one. In this case, my first inclination is that length represented one thing when it was by itself, size of the car, and one thing when it was in a group, aerodynamics of the car. That's something that we have to think about when we look at the results of any multiple linear regression.